In the clip, Dr. Harris lays out quite a knot of discussion with many threads that may be pulled on. I will for now pick up just one of them, the bit about the evil of children dying. First, let me explicitly say that I agree with Harris that the deaths of nine million children under the age of five each year is an evil in the world. It's important to recognize that the determination that this is an evil must have a basis. I will not now discuss the basis, as Harris does not discuss it in the clip. I will only say that, based on my understanding of Christianity, I believe that God would also say that this is an evil in the world and that God hurts and cries over it as much as we do. Thus, I reject the notion that millions of children dying is part of God's plan. In relation to this point, the mystery for me is not in the character of God, but rather in the complexity of the world in a in our freedom to love that God has given. Basically, there are three causes of children dying. Number one, human activity, murder, automobile crashes, etc. Two, sickness, and three, natural disasters and natural causes. Harris does not raise the question of why God doesn't stop evil human activity but others do. So I will say here that God has given us freedom and responsibility to choose love. This necessarily entails the option to choose non-love. Our freedom is a gift that God has given and were God to revoke the gift every time we would choose to misuse it, then it would not be truly a gift. More importantly, without freedom, our love would not be real, but rather it would be the only thing we could do. We would be robots whose programs allowed only loving and responsible actions. But our ability to love is real. When human activity causes evil, we are ultimately responsible, not God. A woodsman who gives his teenage child an axe gives a good gift, but it is the child's responsibility to use it safely and lovingly in relation to other humans. Number two, sickness may arise from either of two causes. Humans not taking care of ourselves, for example, environmental pollution that causes cancer, or from something natural. Thus, sickness as a cause of evil really divides into either number one, human activity, or number three, natural causes. It is important to understand that more of it may go to number one than we realize. We have had thousands of years to pollute our environment in many ways and with complexity beyond what science has the current ability to trace. This leaves number three, natural causes, in which we must include the simple fact that humans do not enjoy eternal physical lives on earth. To understand number three, natural causes, we must understand that Harris's thread of discussion is predicated on the assumption that God exists. That is, we are speaking as if the discussion started with a phrase like, let's assume God exists and ask about children dying. Since we are assuming that God exists, we are assuming there is a preternatural realm of some kind. Many belief systems, including Christianity, hold that there are other preternatural beings, specifically angels, and angels gone bad, which may be called demons. My point here is not to argue for the existence of angels and a preternatural realm, 
but rather something more modest, that, given the context of this part of the discussion, it is reasonable to include in the discussion an assumption that angels exist. Angels are given the same gift of freedom to love that humans are given, and they also are given power to affect the physical world, including weather patterns. As with humans, were God to revoke this gift every time it would be misused, it would not be a gift, and the love of angels would not be real. Again, since the assumption of the discussion is that God exists, one must allow that angels exist, or might. The Bible reflects what I'm saying here in the first chapters of Job, where Satan causes natural disasters and sickness. One might say, yes, but God allows this and doesn't stop it. Fundamentally, by way of God's intent, what God allows is the possibility of love, and I assume that Harris would affirm that love, real love, is a good in the world. What we and the angels do with this freedom is our responsibility. Furthermore, how we react to evil perpetrated by others is also our responsibility specifically whether we react with hate and revenge or with love and forgiveness. What's the point of all this? That it is not necessary to ascribe evil in the world to God. It hurts me terribly when I hear Christians doing so. But there's one more thing to say. Might God indeed cause evil for a higher purpose? Yes, but think of it like this. Suppose the woodman's child nicks a finger with the axe. The wound becomes infected. The child is on a journey away from home and doesn't care properly for the wound. By the time the child arrives home, the infection has progressed to incurable gangrene. At this point, it would be a loving thing to do and for the good of the child, for the woodsman to take the axe and chop off the finger, or the hand, or the forearm if necessary. In like manner, might there be cases where, if we could know all that God knows, we would agree that there was a higher good? I think it's possible. Yet, since we can't know all God knows, it would seem incomprehensible to us. Mysterious, if you like. Thus, for love to exist and be real, the possibility for evil must also exist. My own experience is that even though I want to live in loving ways, I still wind up doing plenty on my own to turn this possibility for evil into reality.